Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, a warm welcome to every one of you joining us for today's webinar. <clears throat> My name is IK, and I am coming live to you from Johannesburg. Um, I have my colleague, uh, Musa, who is going to be assisting me. Um, colleagues, today we are actually going to be having the continuation of our Triple D dashboard report series. Um, and today we'll be looking at the subject mark schedule report. Um, this series has been going on a couple of weeks now. Um, we have talked about the year subject year on year comparison report. We've talked about the um, um, we talked about a couple of them, if I can remember very well. We talked about the SMT Insight report. Yes, um, it's coming back to me. We also talked about the um, there's a, there's one report that I just um, for, forgot. Um, I'm sure um, I'll remember it in the course of the webinar. But what are we talking about today? We are looking about we are looking at the subject mark schedule report. Um, this report is actually um, for the school level. It's also for the district level and for the circuit level. Hence, we invited um, the school level officials. We invited the circuit level and we also invited the curriculum level. So as a subject advisor, as circuit management, and either you're a principal, you are uh, an educator and admin, you'll be able to understand how this is actually um, going to assist you in whatsoever that you do. Now, moving right along, um, I just want to put this in presentation mode so we can start. And the first thing we're actually going to look at is like we're going to look at the next slide, which talks about how the webinar is actually going to be run. Um, colleagues, if you're joining us for the first time, I know that you are. Now, moving right along, colleagues, what are we talking about? We're talking about subject mark schedule report, and we have three learning objectives. Now, the first learning ob objective that we've talked about is the, um, how to identify the variation between exam and report mark by filtering the report. <clears throat> So we know that there's exam test and we know that there is um, the report. So the report actually is um, the, the class-based assessment, which, which we talk, which is also the SBA, the school-based assessment, right? We talked about um, the orals, you know, in um, we talk about the practicals and all that. Right versus the, the the exam test, and when we talk about the exam test, we know that I'm not sure, but I think it's um it's term, term one and term term three we have the test, and and then term two and term four. I'm 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 not sure about this, but I'm just remembering then term two and term four we have the the mid term and the uh, and the end end of year exam, right? So um those are actually the ex exam um tests. So how do we is there a variation when you look at those assessments? Is there a va variation? The idea is the report mark um the the assessment builds you towards the exam test. So if that is not the case, then um, we need to actually reprioritize how are we actually supporting the subject and what are the assessment and what are the trends? Because also this report shows you um, assessment from term one to term four. So you, you'll be able to, you know, monitor the trend. What is the trend analysis? Uh, you know, is it um, going up or is there a dip at a particular term or is the slope just going down? down? I mean, it, it, is the trend just going downwards, right? Now, the next one also that we're actually going to be looking is that we are going to be comparing term performances for the subject. Remember, it's term one to term four. So individual term, we're actually going to be comparing comparing, which also can be called also the trend analysis. Is there actually something that we need to take out, something that we need to note, you know, when we look at performances from term one to term four. Then last but not the least, um, we, are talk, we are looking at um, how to identify on the performing task. Also, what I forgot to tell you is that this report also gives us the different tasks from task one to task seven. So um, we need to know each subject should be able to have their task, right? And uh, one, one of the important things that comes to my head when I think about tasks is when you engage the dashboard, especially when you go through the 
grade view, right? And you look at the subject under each particular grade. And then you look at the task be beside the, the subject, right? We are supposed to capture the information on the the task inform information for more um, um for more information on this please visit our triple d youtube channel and look at the topic where we talk about 10 to date that is where we talked about the task um capturing and how to make sure that we capture the task name so sometimes if you look at those tasks like english you know we have um we have oral and all, all that as task but if you look at those tasks you find out that those tasks are not captured the names of those tasks the subtasks the names are not captured so you see task one task two task three so you'll be asking yourself during analysis what is task one the report that we are looking at does not give you the task name it just gives you task one task two and so forth but we need to engage the triple d dashboard to find out the name of that task under the subject the report just gives you a subject that you're actually engaging but it doesn't tell you the task now you have to employ the services of the dashboard to know the task. Now, the, 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 the snag there is that most of the schools or in at a district level, when you go to the schools, right, on the, on the dashboard, not physically going to the school, when you engage the data on the dashboard, trying to find out the task of the, the name of the task of the particular subject, take for instance, accounting, right? Trying to find out the task. You find out that the task name is not there. It's not cap captured. So we need to also start talking about data quality, capturing at school level, right? Now, moving right along, as we've just talked about three of the things that we're actually going to be looking at. The first thing we want to say is that what is our focus area and what report are we actually utilizing for the purposes of this webinar today and that is actually the subject mark schedule re report and how can i assess this report at what level if i'm sitting at the provincial level if i'm sitting at the school level if i'm sitting at the district level can i be able to access this report from all these different level the answer is yes this report can be accessed from the provincial level straight to the school level however However, the information sits in different um, levels. So the information you are seeing at the district level is not the same you are going to be seeing at the school level. The information you are going to be seeing at the provincial level is not the same you're going to be seeing at the school level. We remember that the province is a compilation of all the districts under the province, right? And also all the schools that makes up a district will now be under the district. So at different level, you actually be seeing the different things that you are actually supposed to see, right? Now, moving right al along, the next question that will come to our mind is, now I know um, how, where I can access this report. It, um, it can be accessed from a provincial level straight to a school level. The next question is, how do I locate this report from the dashboard? How do I locate this report from the dashboard? The first thing you need to do at any level that you are, once you log onto the dashboard, right? You can see you'll be on the summary page. Immediately from the summary page, can we all click the reports tab? Now, when we click the report tab, after institution summary, which has this report, the next one is learner achievement. Now, under learner achievements, this is where it is, right? That's under learner achievement. The fifth report under learner achievement is the subject mark schedule report. Now, once you click this report, this parameter of, um, option, this tab is what will come up. And now can we see that it's per subject only? Now you can do one subject at a time. You cannot box sub subject together one subject at a time that is when what you can access and what does this do it it as allows us to prioritize based on an individual subject and this is very also good for the subject ad advisors that are actually monitoring and supporting their individual subject now they might say you know i'm not interested in xyz subject i want to see africans home language or is Zulu home language or i want to see english file or i want to see mathematics as the case may be you zero down to the subject. The next thing that is very important is that you can select the grade that you want to view. Now, based on the subject 
we want to know the grade, maybe one grade, two grade, three grade, as the case may be, that is actually offering that subject, I want to see the performance. And remember, there are also information on this report that will actually um, also help us during the analysis. And we're actually going to go to the next slide. And that's what it says here. It says, we want to illustrate the information um, available in the subject mark schedule re report. Now, uh, we want to look at this and we want to understand, right? What are the information on the report? Colleagues, the information that we're actually going to show you is not everything there. We just picked out those that are very crucial and very important in the course of this session. And then we're actually going to give you the description of those um, information that you're actually going to get from the um, subject mark schedule reports. Now, when we look at this slide, it tells us on the left here, we see, uh, I think about seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven information that we've picked out. Remember I said, it is not limited to the seven, right? But we picked out the seven. And by the right here, you'll see the description. And I'm just going to read two or three for the purposes of this, just because of time. Right. Um, the first one here is we know the learner name, which is very important during analysis. And the good thing about this report is that you're going to see the learner name and you're going to see the exam test and the report. Mark. So the school based assessment you're going to see and you're going to see the external assessment and you're going to compare. That is the first learning objective, which is the, the variation. Is there any variation? Ideally, what we want to see is that we want to see the report mark actually leading to a very high or a very good exam test mark. So when we have um, maybe a lesser um, report mark and a higher exam test, or we might have both of them high, that shows that that is actually what we want. But it is very um, strange when we see a very high report mark, a very high internal assessment. And then when we look at the external, which is the exam test, we see a very low assessment. Then that means that what we are actually plan planning, which is the, the, the school-based assessment propelling or actually, um, what's the word again? actually capacitating you or um, building you towards having a very good score or very good assessment score during, um, for the exam test. That might not be the case. And our question is, what is the reason, right? I would not be able to give you the reason, but the data will be able to assist you with the reasons. That's why I bring the data to you. What are the reasons? Is it because of um, the way the assessment is being set? One thing also is, is the syllabus even covered, right? Are we sure the syllabus is co covered? So those are, you know, these are just few of things that we actually need to look at. Remember also when I talked about um, um, profiling, when you are actually trying to analyze, right? Remember that when you have not gotten the root cause, right, you would never be able to get those interventions. You'll be able to understand, if you're not able to understand the root cause, what propelled, what give rise to this underperformance, what give rise to this um, 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 slopey trend analysis that we are seeing. If we have not been able to pick up the root cause analysis, then we will not be able to resolve anything, right? Now, the next one also, also I have said that the information we have on the report, the subject match schedule report is in term one to term four. So it gives us a holistic view, a full view um, to be able to make that informed decision. And one of the things that we are actually going to be looking at here is we need to be able to prioritize support adequately. And what is the one thing that will give us that view where we're actually going to put our support? It is actually um, the information, right? The information on the report, right? If we analyze this and we actually um, get to the root cause and know what is actually giving rise to this, then we can prioritize support adequately. It's no use supporting a subject that is actually doing well, where we have a subject that actually needs an immediate support, right? This um, information is actually going to help us rearrange, reprioritize the support that we're actually giving to the schools and be able to assist the learners and the subject, right? Now, last but not the least, remember I said, I am not going to go through everything, is the uh, exam test and report mark 
percentage, exam test percentage and report mark percentage. This is one and two. Those are the two things I'm going to explain here. Now the exam test mark percentage is the percentage of subject passed based on exam and test mark represented as a percentage, right? The same thing with the report mark. The report mark just have a little difference, which is the percent of subject passed based on final learner report mark. We've talked about the report and we've talked about the exam test. Now, the levels is just on um, the achievement level obtained in the subject based on exam test and the achievement level for report mark level is the achievement level obtained in the subject based on final learner report mark, right? Now, moving right along, you get the slides and you'll be able to look at this in more detail. Moving right al along, remember I said we have different views, right? I'm going to pick two views just in for the course of all to help the explanation in this webinar. The first view I'm going to be looking at is the district view. How, when I'm sitting in the district view as a subject advisor, right, as a district director, right, as, um, you know, um, someone in DZIM, in MS, you know, how do I actually, what do I see? right, on the subject mark schedule report, what do I see? Now, moving right along, this is what we see. And remember, this is at a district view and the subject picked here is mathematics. The subject picked here is mathematics. Remember, I actually picked two grades, grade 10 and 11, for the course of this information. Now, this tab is for grade 10. On the next re report, you will see those two tabs. But this tab is for grade 10. Now, can we see the EMIS code, the district, the schools? It gives you the quintile. As I said, the illustration table did not pick everything. We just picked the important things, right? Now, we see the accession number. We see the learner name. Now, if you are a principal, and I always say this, but I'm going to not, I'm not going to say this now, but I'm going to say it in the um, school view. But principal take note of this, right? Um, educators take note of this, administrators take note of this. However, if you are at the district level, you would not be able to see this, right? If you maybe are a subject advisor, some other designation in the cur curriculum and all that, you will not be able to see this. And this is not because something is wrong, but it's because of the puppy act, right? The personal information, PI view. If you don't have access to the PI view, you will be seen anonymized name so you will not be seeing the real name right the only people that are actually being able to see the real name is the principal however however if you are working at any level and the names of the learners is important to your job description is important to what you do you can also get that access. All you need to do is motivate, get that form, our um, access form, the, the user access form, and fill it and motivate why you need to have the access, the PI view. And then your direct line manager needs to sign. Once they sign, I will give the information I'm actually going to give you at the end. You will send that form there and they'll actually but your line manager needs to sign to say yes whatsoever you are saying is right so attest their signature and sign because definitely all this access are being audited so we'll be able to give you that access and you would actually be able to see the names the personal information on the learners in the dashboard now can we see that we have the exam test we have the level report mark percentage we have the levels and it's also term one to term four moving also to the next slide it's a continuation of the previous slide right now can we see we have the grade 10 and grade 11 here. Can we see we have the grade 10 and the grade 11, but we're actually looking at the grade 10s. Now, can we see term two, term, term three? Exam test, um, report mark percentage, report mark level, everything, exam test, the level, report mark, the level. Now, when we look at this, can we also go to the task? Right, the next slide. Now, can we see the task also? each of the tax. Now, this was where I was saying that if there was an analysis that is being done here, right, you cannot know for mathematics what are these tasks. You don't know the subtask name. Now, if you want to create an intervention, you need to know the subtask name. You need to know at every topic of that subject, right, of that task, 
at what level is the understanding game, right? We need to know the assessment. We need to know how, if the syllabus was covered and a couple of things more that we also need to know, but we need to start with knowing the name of the task. Now, when we look at the task two and we go to the grade, right? We go to the learner name and we go to the grade and we look at the information. So from grade view, you go down to, um, to the learn learner and you can see the information. Right when you click on the task, the different tasks, you see the whole subject, you see task one, task two, and as the case may be, once you click on the score, you will see a description of everything. Now, majority of the time, colleagues, you don't see the name of the task. I'm not saying that it's not there, it is there. Some schools capture it. Now, you don't even need to go to the dashboard. You need to also check on SSMs. Remember, whatever is captured on SSMs is transposed to the dashboard. Now, if it's not on the dashboard, it's definitely not going to be on SSMs. So my 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 uh, request to everyone here is we should start talking about this. We should start talking about data quality, right? Capturing needs to be done well. We need to capture the names. We need to capture. It also shows you when that task is due and when it is captured. Most of the time you will see that it, those information too are not captured 100%. So also another thing that's important is that we also need to look at the weighting, right? The weighting is there and most times we see that the weightings are not the same. You know, in report mark and exam. Now, report mark can be a compilation of um, different of the tasks and you see some weighting will be over 25. Some weighting will be over 75. Right now, we need to actually look at all that, make sure everything is captured correctly because it helps us when we analyze. You cannot just analyze based on one report. A report will spill over. Like maybe you see the subject is not, and I'm just going to explain this now. Just maybe you're actually analyzing a sub subject and you see, you pull out this report and you now find out the first thing the report tells you is that the assessment, this SBA is actually higher than the exam test. That means the SBA is not getting learners ready for the exam. They are passing the SBA, I mean, the re report mark, but they are actually failing the exam because most of the time it might be the syllabus is not covered. Another thing is maybe um, the educators teaching those subjects, right? We need to also look, look at them. The subject that they actually specialized in, right? We need to look at the subject that they actually did while they were in school. Is it the, and also the subject that they specialized on? And what subject are they teaching? We also need to look at what are the other subjects that those learners that are failing that particular subject that is being analyzed, how are they faring in other subjects? And we need to actually merge it. If they're actually doing good in those subjects, and let's look at the exam. If they're actually doing well, then we need to ask, how is teaching done with those other so, so, subjects compared to the one that they are not doing well? There's a whole lot to analyze and it gives you other, it makes you go to the summary page of the dashboard. It makes you download other re report. This would actually assist you in actually getting to the root point. I mean, the root cause. Now, moving on to the next um, view. Remember I said, we looked at the district view. Now we are going to look at the school view. Now on the school view, remember what I said? I said, pay attention on, as a principal, pay attention on the learner name. Now as a principal, this is a school view. The previous one I showed you is a district view. This is a school view. Now as a principal, if you, ha if you have your access on the dashboard and you download this report, maybe after or while we are doing this now, you actually download this report and you are seeing exactly what I'm seeing. You are not seeing the learner name. Instead, you are seeing a session number and asterisks and all this number. Please let us know because you something is wrong with your access. You are definitely will should be able to see the learner names because you're actually a custodian of the school. You're actually in charge in the school and you're you, you, you actually um, responsible for the performances of the learners in your school. And with this view, you will not be able to monitor your learners adequately. So you're able to see the name. So if you are not seeing this, then please let us know and this would be resolved. It might be something wrong with your access, right? And I've said those um, 
at this district level, I have given you the information on if you want to see the learner name, it must actually be in line with what you do. Okay, now based on this, can we see that this report also is color coded, right? The report gives you the red, amber, and the gray, right? Based on the performance, and it gives you the level, right? It gives you the red, amber, and the green. And moving to the next one, can we see the next one here? Right, it gives you the red, amber, and the green. The red, amber, and the green. Now, can we see? Uh, maybe let's look at this, this here, and let's look at term, term four. Let's look at term four. Can we see term four? Now, this is actually um, on exam test. Can we see? Exam test is thirty six. Term four. Can we see re report mark forty six? Just as an ex example, can we see another one here? Can we see they are actually failing both report, but um, um, internal based assessment, which is the practical, the orals, the report mark, they are also failing the exam test. So both, most of this, you will need to look at them. You, it's, it's something is not right when you are failing both, when you are failing both, right? we need to actually reprioritize. We need to take two or three steps back to say, what is actually wrong here? What are we not doing right here, right? They are failing the school-based assessment. They are failing the external assessment. Something is not right, okay? Now, these are the kind of information we need to extract from this report and then call up other report during our analysis to be able to get the right information that we need to be taught to turn things around in the school right now the last one can we see the task and most times you'll find out one thing also that i forgot to say is that you'll find out that the task is not even captured the task is not even captured you know, and, um, you know, that's where verification comes in. That's where the HOD, that's where the principal, sometimes as the case may be, um, comes in to say, can we do a random spot check to make sure that the administrator, as the case may be, that's if the schools have the administrator that is capturing, because we know some of the schools we have, I have seen schools that educators capture this information. I've seen schools that principal capture this information. So it's a mix of everything, right? Now we need to actually be able to verify this information and make sure that there is no discrepancy between the raw data, which is on the mark sheet and the information captured on SSNs, which is also submitted on the dashboard, right? Moving right along. Now we've looked at this information and we've said, you know, there's a whole lot of information here. Now, if I'm sitting at the district level, I'm sitting at the school level, I'm sitting at the second level, or maybe, uh, you know, in either of this level, I'm a principal or I'm a subject advisor. Okay, let's say a subject ad ad advisor. I will come to the principal much later. Now, a subject advisor is actually interested in the subject that they support, right? The subject will inform them of the school that is not doing well. So when a subject advisor goes for the dashboard, they go to the phase, phase view. They choose either foundation phase, you know, senior phase, FET, intermediate, they choose one. And from that phase, they go to the subject direct that they actually support. Now, from that subject that they support, it will now give them the schools that are actually not doing. It's based on the profiling that they do. Now, based on that, they would learn, or if they are looking at this report directly, that's this, the first report, they go straight to subject match schedule report. Remember, it gives you the subject, right? They choose the subjects that they actually support. Now, they want to look at maybe grade, two or they want to look at grade 10 and 11 as the case may be here, they click that grade. Now, every information they have is based on the subjects they support. So what they're actually going to be filtering now is based on those learners that are actually not doing well, right? And most of the times they want to compare. If we have maybe 100 learners, how many learners are actually doing well? Do we have half of the class doing well? Do we have maybe 10% of the class doing well? Do we have 5% of the class doing well? As the case may be, what are the, what are the reasons? What are the causes? Also, can I look at the, 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 this um, information that I've just seen? Can I more look at it more holistically? So can I look at term one to term four? 
Am I seeing something there? Is there a deep? Okay, let's leave that. Can I look at the task? What is the performances of the task? Different terms. Are they actually doing well in the task? If they are not doing well, what are the causes? Is the syllabus covered? Is the educator well equipped, well supported to teach those subjects? As I said, there's a whole lot of things that can be talked about this, but let's go straight to how to filter. Now, from when they have looked at it, they need filtering to be able to drill down to a particular information that they actually need. So they need filtering to drill down to a particular um, information, right? So what I'm saying, all these things that I've said is in how you can actually analyze. Now, how does filter come in? Filter, what, what filter does is in the full Excel, the full information that you are actually looking at, right? The full in information, what filter does is that filter helps you drill down to a particular information. It rearranges that table. I'm just saying this before I go straight into field filter. So please pardon me, right? It rearranges this. Now, let's go straight to the next slide. When you click on the report, remember, at a school level, you click on the report. Now, you want to actually talk about or drill down, right? You want to drill down this and be able to analyze and be able to drill down on a re report on how you can be able to go. Like you see now, there's a whole lot of information. At any level of um, um, official, maybe you're at a circuit level, you're at a school level, you're at a district level, you might not be needing all of this. You need just, you want to know just the rent, those that are in red, because those are the one feeling. Because what the meeting that you guys are having is you want to reprioritize your support. Maybe you are not getting it well the way you support schools. Because when you go out, you hear that other schools are more in their need of you than the schools you have visited based on that subject support. So it's always good to actually profile Get the information before you start going out. And this assists you in profiling. And profiling, you might say, I want to look at the red schools because we know that red are learners that are actually failing, subjects that are not doing, doing well. Now, I want to now filter based on this red. I don't want this amber. I don't want the green. I don't want, I just want this red only. That's where filter comes in. And to filter, what is the first thing you need to do? You need to highlight all of this. The sub topic, I mean, the sub um, information here, everything. Remember, we have the 10. There are two places to filter, one here and one here. I'm going to show you when I go to the live report that I pre-downloaded, -down right? The first thing, as I said, you click on is you highlight them and make sure you highlight it end to end. So scroll right to the end to make sure it is highlighted end to end to make sure there are no errors. It gives you, it filters correctly. After doing this, what's the next thing you need to do? You need to click on to is data. Data first. After you click on data, you click on filter. Remember, after you highlight this data and then filter. After you immediately you click on filter, you will see these drop down arrows will just appear. Now, when these drop down arrows appear, that is what I'm going to show you now. One after, I'm sorry, they, they're actually not going to appear the way it's coming one after the other. Everything will appear automatically immediately. Now, when this has appeared, it's telling you that this Excel document is ready to be filtered. What are you looking for? What do you want us to take off and show you? So drill down to exactly what you want. And it's not going to be deleted, no. They're just going to hide those information because you are giving the command here saying that this other information is not important. I want to check X, Y, Z. As I said, I just want to check those that are in red, right? Now, the next slide is saying filter by color. Now, if you want to check for this, the reds, after you have done all of that, you click on, maybe you want to check either on exam test or report mark. 
So here is exam test. You click on exam test, and then this dialog box comes. You now say sort by color. The colors are going to align here. Then you just click the red. Immediately you click the red. What happens is the Excel is going to rearrange and all you are going to see is the red information that you requested for. That is what all you are going to see. Also, you might say, no, that is not what I want. I want to sort this information based on largest to smallest or smallest to largest. I want to say I am not looking at learners that are actually scoring from 50 and above. I'm looking at learners that are actually scoring from 50 and below. All you need to do is sort from largest to smallest or sort from smallest to largest. So smallest gives you the smallest number to the largest number. Largest to smallest give you from the largest number to the smallest number, as the case may be. That's why Excel is very good. Filtering helps you. It tells you this is those information I want. And while you are doing this, please have a pen. Or if you are working on your laptop, have a template that you can actually copy this information and put there. Because analysis without having this information put down, you will definitely go back again. No, you need to put something down when you are analyzing, right? Now, that's ex exactly what I just said. I'm just going to show you here. Also, you can do smallest to largest and largest to smallest. Now, what am I saying? I'm talking about the term template. I just talked about when you're analyzing, you need to have something down. So I put this down. And what I just did here was that I put comparing exam test and report mark performances. And what I said here is that I just want to look at the report. And looking at the report, remember, colleagues, you can change this. I just put Africans home language. You can change it to any subject that you are actually um, profiling or looking at, right? Now, remember, the report gives you term one to term four. Now you put the exam test percentage as captured in the report. You put the report mark. Is there any discrepancy? Is there any discrepancy between both? What are the reasons? And that is if you are having maybe your SMT meeting, you are having um, maybe that um, performance meet meeting where you have the, the um, subject advisor, the circuit manager, the principal, HOD, I don't know what those meeting is called, but this is a very important um, report to actually, I mean, a template to actually use, right? To be able to talk about this report. Now, once you look at this and you look at the exam test and the report mark, you now have to talk about the reasons, right? You talk about what are the reasons. Now, is the syllabus covered, right? Um, how was the teaching, right? You also need to look at other subjects. Is the educator well equipped? Does the educator feel supported, right? And most of the time, because the educator knows these learners, they will be able to tell you these reasons. They don't even need, some of them you need to go to the dashboard, you need to backdate and find out. Some of them, these educators, they have the answer at the palm of their hands. They give you the reasons immediately. Some of them will say, you know, this learner is not always in school because you need to look at attendance too. Right? You need to look at attendance. They will tell you, some will tell you, it might be a language barrier. This, uh, this learner preferred to be taught in their mother tongue and you're actually teaching them in English. As I said, these are just examples. Right? Now, immediately after this, the next slide is very important. And this slide will um, give us some discussion topic. However, note that I'm still going to show you just an example on the pre-downloaded reports that I've just down downloaded, just what we've just talked about. Now, what this slide is telling us, it says bar graph showing the average difference between exam test and report mark. And what this is saying is, this is saying here, can you see that it's negative? Right, and here is positive. Now, based on the subject, here is saying exam test result is performing below report mark result. Is that what we want? This is not what we want, right? From term one to term four, it's performing. Exam test is performing below, right? 
and the reverse is what we actually wanted. Now look at the flip side. It says report mark is better than exam test. This is what we actually want, right? This is so report mark is better than exam test. We want report mark to be better. We want exam test to be better. Sorry, I was saying that that is what we want, but no. Um, we want this to be better. This is supposed to be informing this. So this is supposed to be good. Um, it might not be immediately, but over time it's supposed to be good, right? But this is supposed to inform this. This is supposed to adequately equip those learners to be able to do well here. Okay, now let's look at the next slide. Now the next slide goes more deeper. It says, if your subject has an exam test result performing below report mark, what is the reason for this? What is the reason? And as, as I said, most of these educators, they know the reasons. The reports also might show you the reasons. There's a couple of things that you need to look at that will show you the reasons. The next one that we have to look at is, how do you ensure the exam test and report mark result have less variance? Because we, as I said, we want both of them to do well. We want the exam test to do well. We want the report mark to do well. How do we make sure they have less variance? Both of these are supposed to be doing well. So both of these, are so, this here is supposed to be here. Let's go back to the former slide, to the previous slide. This here is supposed to be here. So everything is supposed to be on the right side. We would not want anything to be on the left side. Everything is supposed to be on the right side, but exam test, but report mark. But we are seeing a lot here and we are seeing here. I hope we un understand. Colleagues, permit me to stop sharing. Um, we have gotten to the Q&A, but I'm just going to stop sharing. And I'm going to take a moment to just go straight to the reports, right? Just permit me to go to the reports. And we just look at just one report. We look at one report and um, yeah. That is just going to show you what I've just spoken ab about. And the reports that we're actually going to be looking immediately, remember I said the first thing, I'm just going to go to the process of us highlighting. Can we see, we highlight here, right? And I'm just going to do it again. We highlight here, look at what I'm doing. I'm going, I'm making sure that it is highlighted to the end. I'm making sure, and can we see it's highlighted to the end? Now, what's the next thing that I need to do? The next thing that I need to do is click on data, and from data, just watch. If I click on filter, you will see what's going to happen. Now, look at those, um, just look at those um, drop down arrows. Immediately, I click on this. Now, when we click on this, can we see it's now showing? All of this is now showing. Can we see this now? Now, I'm just going to go straight to what I've just spoken to us about. Now we want to see for report mark, right? We want to actually see the red. And you remember what I said, I said, go straight to color. And can we see? We have the red and we have the amber. And the red is what we want. Can we see? We're actually talking about this here. I'm just going to move this. I'm just trying to get, yeah, this is what we actually are actually um, wanting to see. Now, can we see it has just given us just this red? There are not a lot of reds here, right? We see it has given us the red. Now, the good thing about this is that you now go and get the names of the learners in red for accounted report mark, school-based assessment. Now, when you want to clear, you come up here and you clear. And immediately you clear, it has actually cleared that. Now you can also do for exam test. You come here and you say you want those, um, sorry, you come here and you say you want those that actually um, are for red. Now, the first thing you need to do also is that you go back again and you highlight and you look at the color. Okay, there's no red here. Now we want the one for amber, you click. Can we see? This is what, remember, we actually, sorry, we actually dealing with J. Can we see? 
these are them alone. That's exactly what I have just. So I'm just going to show you those two. Remember, you can also sort from lowest to highest and highest to lowest and so many others. You can also look at the topics that we have actually done pre previously to know the processes of um, analyzing and filtering. Now, let's stop um, sharing here because we're actually done here and let's go back. back to the slide, make sure I'm in the right slide, yeah. All right, um, I'm going to stop here and ask my colleague, um, Yankee Musa, sorry, Musa, do you, um, I know you've been seeing questions and all that. Is there any comment, contribution, question that you have for me? Over to you, Musa, thank you. Thank you very much, Aiki. Uh, our guests have been very quiet uh, this afternoon. I guess it means your explanation was clear. If that's not the case, colleagues, I am now launching the polls. Uh, ask that you engage with those polls. Seven very quick questions, multiple choice, uh, and of course, anonymous that will allow you to rate um, the, the, the experience that you've had with today's webinar. We ask that you please partake in, in that. And if at this point you do have a question that you wanna ask live, can click on the icon with the hand on it, raise your hand and we will get to you. But uh, yeah, as of this point, uh, the only question that was asked was by Tapelo Pizu, uh, and they were anxious to see a live demonstration of what you were talking about, but that was earlier on and of course we covered that. Uh, yeah, I can, no questions at this point, just uh, launching the polls and waiting for our colleagues to participate in that. All right, thank you so so much, Musa. Um, you know, it it says one one thing. If there is no question, it either says um, people are um, okay, they understand this, it's well explicit. Um, it also says another thing um, that um, people might need uh, more training on this, and that is covered also in the feedback. You know, I I think correct me, Musa. I think that is the last question. And yes, I can yes. see that people are actually engaging with it. Yeah, so um, it's actually either of them. Um, but Musa, I see that there is a question. So if you'd be kind enough to go through that thing. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, Nora Chikota says, can you please explain how you get the name of the task? I don't think this is something that you find on this report. I think you have to go to the dashboard. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you so much, Musa. Um, what I'm actually going to say is that um, there's actually a webinar topic that we talked about this. I'm not sure, but I think it's the term to date. But I'm just quickly going to go through how you can get that on the dashboard. Hopefully that helps. But if you, uh, if you do not understand, um, I'm just going to go quickly to the next slide. This is our project, um, provincial project managers in the provinces. Also, we have the help desk and the... Um, phone number, the email and the phone number. But if you want to know the task name, which is very important, right? You need to go to the grade view. So from the grade view, you will actually now go to the subject. From the grade view, you go straight to the subject. From the subject, you'll see all the subject that is being offered at that grade. And by the right of it, so scroll down. When you scroll down at the right of it, you would see um, marks. Now, when you see those marks, hover around those marks a dialogue box will come out. I think it comprises of the waiting. It has the task name. So when you go through the, if you don't see the task name when you hover, right? Under maybe English, you hover on the score that you see, either of the task. Once you hover on the task, you are, the first thing you will see is the task name. Now, if you see a number, maybe one, two, three, know that the task is not, the task name is not captured. Right, But if you see maybe English, you see oral, then you know that that is oral. So they are supposed to capture the task name before they start capturing other in information. I know the waiting is, is there and other information when it's due, when it's captured. And if it's an exam or a test, uh, you know, it's also there. So that will give you a description of the task. I hope I was able to assist. Thanks, Musa. 
Thank you, Aki, for that uh, response. I, I guess it means future uh, installments of this session, we should probably add that piece, as you know, colleagues, we're developing these topics as we, we get along. The more we have them, the stronger they get, thanks to not only the questions you ask, but also those polls. And speaking of the polls, we have around 50% of us participating in the poll. If you are struggling to find that poll, colleagues, if you could just move your mouse, you will see a bar will appear, a, a Zoom bar, and one of the buttons there is poll. If you can click on that, then you'll be able to, to participate in that. Um, I see there's a hand raised here from Zoake. Um, let me see who the person's name is there. Oh, it, it, they raised their hand and then it disappeared again, I think. I'm not seeing it anymore. Are you seeing it on your side, IK? I hope I'm not making a mistake. Here. No, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not seeing any, any hand. Yeah, it looks like you raised it and then pulled back that question. But other than that, I see IK, you have displayed our team there. Uh, can you speak a little bit on that slide? All right, thank you so much. Um, colleagues, also in the course of the se session, I talked about um, those, about the PI view and all that. And I'm saying that principals that are actually not um, seeing the names of the learners because you're supposed to see the names of the learners. If you are not, please engage with the help desk. And I, and I have told you what you need to do. You need to actually get the user access form. You need to complete it and you need to motivate you know why i uh, sorry for th this is those that are not pr principals for principals you need to actually just contact the help desk right you contact the help desk either by email or by phone call and say you're a pr principal they'll actually verify your access and if there's anything it will be rectified and then you'll be able to see when next you log you'll be able to see and download sorry you'll be able to see either on the summary page and also on the downloadable report the learner's name however on the flip side if you're at a district level you know that was just where i mixed it up if you're at a district level maybe a subject advisor or whatever the case may may be right and you feel there is a need for you to see personal information right like the learner names you need to actually get the um user access form you can get it from either the 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 um the person in charge of triple d or you can actually ask the provincial manager sending them an email alternatively you can actually um get in touch with our help desk either by email or phone number all you need to say is um you are requesting to have the personal information access and they will ask you for that form it's called the user access form it must be filled you motivate on that form why you need that access and your direct line manager needs to sign on that then you send it over once that is done then the necessary adjustment will be done and when next you log on you'll be able to see personal information. I hope I was able to cover everything, Ms. Musa. Thanks, Ike. And a response from Nora she says, thank you for the answer. Well explained. It seems we covered her there. No other questions except uh, maybe let's close with a very nice word of thanks from Noma Lady. Uh, and she says, uh, thanks guys for these webinars. They are assisting us a lot. And, and I, I know that's our heart, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah, back to you, IK. Thanks, Norma Lady, for those uh, words of thanks. Uh, I think in the absence of, of questions, IK, let us uh, uh, thank everyone for coming in and wish them a good day. All right. Um, thank you so much, um, Musa. At some point, I didn't know if I was supposed to talk or you are still talking, but thank you so much, Musa. Um, colleagues, I just, I just want to say a word of thanks. Thank you so much for taking our time to join today's session and the call to action here and uh, the next steps is obviously going back to the dashboard right downloading the subject mark schedule report looking at this report as i said the pack is going to be sent to us looking at this re report you can go back to the recording look at the vi video also if you have forgotten certain steps and in the process of looking at this and also personalizing it and when i say personalizing it what i'm actually looking at as a school level principal in school A might be different from what the other person is actually doing or trying to look at. Now, when you do this in the process and you find out that there are questions because definitely more questions are going to come, please engage with 
your provincial managers through the emails or alternatively engage with our help desk via the email or the phone number. If you need more deep dive on this, that means when I say deep dive, I mean more in-depth training because one hour is too short. Also get in touch with this information, uh, you know, you might say, I can't see all this. Remember, this pack is actually going to be sent to you. Your feedback is actually very important to you, to us. Thank you so much, colleagues. I just want to say thank you so much. Um, it's been a wonderful two days. We had the same topic yesterday and today. Thank you so much for taking our time because I know each and every one of us is actually busy, but taking our time to join us here. Remember, continue to share these links to your colleagues that you feel this session will be a great benefit to. I just want to say thank you and have yourself a blessed week. Um, Mus I sorry also for Musa, you know, you know, um, I, as I said yesterday, um, people that actually uh, are at the background working, making sure that you are getting us live every Thursday and Friday. Musa, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And colleagues, have yourself a wonderful Friday.